Okay. So then at 13 years old, she met her first husband, Carlos Trujillo. Yes. Very young age yeah. to, to get married. Yeah, Pest- Pestañitas ran the other side of the neighborhood, Carlos Trujillo. His name was Pestañas because he had eyelashes. Like my brother, Black, his eyelashes were very long. And um, he fell in love with her. He, was, uh, he would falsify documents. And he was the local bootlegger and numbers runner. And he kind of taught her that game. And then they got into marijuana. Right. They had three kids, Dixon, Uber, and Osvaldo. Yes. And uh, they had nicknames. Yeah. El Negro, Piti, and Chiqui. Right. Uh, El Negro because, what, he had black hair? Well, Pesañitas was from Afro-Latino descent. Uh-huh. Uh, like I said, El Barrio Antioquia, a lot of Afro-Latinos from the coast. Mm-hmm. So he was um, of a darker skin tone. So we just called him black since he was little. Right. And Uber, his nickname was? Piti because he was skinny like a straw. Pitijo means straw in Colombian. Bang. Gotcha. And Osvaldo, his nickname was? Chiqui because he was chiquitico, short, small. Okay. Got it. Who's the spoiled one? I'd say Cheeky. Cheeky. Yeah. Right. And me, of course. Right, of course, because you were ultimately the youngest later on. Yeah. Okay. So, like you mentioned, they started a, a marijuana dealing business in Colombia. Um, Everything. For, it was marijuana, extortion, numbers, and um, rooster fights. Rooster fights. Yeah. If you see El Patron del Mal, they show when Pablo Escobar would go to El Barrio Antioquia with his boss. Mm. And his boss would have the VIP section. My mother kind of liked the guy before before the wars, and they were um, contrabandistas, contrabanders. They would smuggle in goods from different countries into Colombia and resell them, but you couldn't sell nothing without my mother's permission. May it be electric domestics or marijuana. Okay, but at one point, that marriage went bad, and they got mm-hmm. into an argument. No. No? No, that's, that's public record. It's... So um, Pestañita dies from hepatitis B in a New York hospital after they were trafficking for years. Okay, because the story is that she had him killed. Uh, They say she had him killed and El Capitan, Carlos Bravo, but neither of them were killed by her. Really? Yes. So all this was false? False, 100%. I speak, I wrote about it in my book. Okay, was this something that that she pushed to make herself more fearsome or other people try to put that on her? Um, I think it was urban myth because during the 1960s to like the 70s, she became like an urban legend because first she was a known criminal, but then they made so much money with the contraband and, and sending Rifa to the United States. Her, El Capitan, later Rafiko and everybody, that she became like a real estate czar in Medellin. So a lot of people back then, nobody knew what a drug dealer was or a queen pin was. So you couldn't point the finger and say, oh, this lady's a drug trafficker. It didn't exist. The routes didn't exist. She basically created the routes. So she was she was a bit of like a political figure, I guess, in the city of Medellin, because she started buying up so much real estate from the dollars they were making in New York. Okay, so... Her and Carlos Trujillo ended up divorcing at one point. No, he died from hepatitis B in the hospital in two okay. days. Oh, so she was still married to him yes. at the time. Yeah, ah. and she had her household with him. They all lived in New York, my brothers and him. Okay, because then at one point she met Alberto Bravo. Yeah, El Capitan. That happened in Colombia or in the States? Um, El Capitan was her childhood friend. They grew up, he was, I think he was from Laureles and she was from Barrio Antioquia. So all the rich kids, in order to get their weed and their drugs or have a prostitute, they would come to El Barrio Antioquia. And my mother basically was the queen of El Barrio. So they were teenagers and they became real good friends. I guess later on he joins the Navy and uh, he helps her figure out how to transport more cannabis to the United States. Later cocaine. Okay, so what year did she actually move into the United States? Uh, early 70s. By 1975, um, Pestañitas and El Capitan and my mother were already transitioning to cr- crystallized cocaine and base. It was still base and then crystallized cocaine. Mm-hmm. And that's how they, they basically broke bread in, in the city of New York. 
Okay, because she set up shop in Queens. Yes. And her and Alberto Bravo were married? Yeah, they were married, but it's it's um it's also like urban myth that they were married as as lovers or she had her husband from Colombia, but she needed United States citizenship. Mm-hmm. And he had become a citizen. Aha. Uh-huh. So they they did it for that. Okay. And from what I understand, her business with Alberto Bravo started to really take off where she was making millions and millions of dollars. Yes. 